Hi guys, Exit Rider. Thanks for joining me once again. Now this week I have Ruth with the Triumph Street Scrambler and John with a Harley Davidson 107 Street Bob. This is John. He's uh, got the Harley Davidson Street Bob 107. Uh, how long have you owned the bike, John? Uh, about a year. About a year so far, yeah. Yeah. What bikes have you owned in the past? Um, I've had a Versi 650. That was my first. Uh, big bike, uh, Pan European ST1100, which was uh, fun, a bit top heavy. Uh, an R90 Scrambler, which is yeah. the one I had previous to this. Oh, yes, um, how did you get on with that? Um, oh, it was an amazing bike, I loved it, but for what I needed, um, it was just uh, uh, just not long distance enough for me. I needed something a bit more comfortable. Yes, I'm knocking on a bit now, so I yeah, needed. and that's something with these is that they are surprisingly comfortable for doing longer distances and. Absolutely. You know, even when you whack it into sixth gear, you also still got sixth gear, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, even when you whack it into sixth gear, you know, it, it tends to go along the motorway so smoothly and nicely, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, yeah, really low revs. Um, but I've got the uh, dresser bar on the front here, which obviously then gives me uh, differing uh, leg positions, and that's needed for long journeys. It really is. Yeah. I know a lot of people put forwards on them, but then you cut out your options. I think, and I don't think that's. I, th I think this is the the way forward for me anyway. Yeah. I think that's a good happy medium actually, because I must admit, although I haven't had a problem with the peg height or you know the position on the bike that i've had um to have those is it gives you an extra bit of yeah. cruising sort of style Options, yeah absolutely um and crucial especially when your knees get a bit achy over a few hours so yeah yeah that's good, yeah, that's good. And now you've got this bike, is this the sort of bike that you'd be comfortable touring on as well, or was well, it? Absolutely. With the, um, now I've got the uh, backrest on there, uh, you can just strap bags to it. I mean, me and Ruth, uh, we, we, what, 700 mile was our last last little uh, mini tour, shall we say. It was, uh, went out to see a friend in uh, near Eastbourne, Ian, who got a W800, and uh, I wanted to see his bike, and it was nice to meet up with him. Yeah. And then we went up to uh, East Suffolk to see uh, Malcolm and Julie, and that was that was good. He's got a Scrambler, the older style to what Roof has. Oh, yeah. And that's uh, a lovely bike as well, nice guy. Yeah. And then we took went from East Suffolk right the way down to North Devon in one, one hit, and it was really comfortable. Um, obviously, you get you get tired, every, you know, you're going to get fatigued, but it, it wasn't... That's the deal on any bike, yeah. Yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't causing me the issues that the R90 did over a long distance. Beautiful bike, though, and I... I wish I could keep both. The only bike that you've got? or I oh, know I've got a um, Honda Super Cub 125, which I, I use for work. a bit work. different. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it is. And uh, obviously, the, I don't know if you're aware, the gears on that are quite weird. They're this um, sequentially down and up rather than one down, four up. They're all like four down, then four back up. Yeah, you just reminded me now. I, I can't, I could never get my head around that. Um, trying to, riding that one daily for, um, back back and forth to work is uh, lovely. I, I, mean, I love the bike, it's brilliant. But then when you jump on this and you go to overtake and you misjudge which way your gear is going. Yes. That makes the bike <laughs> rev sort of quite loudly yeah. and tends to terrify motorists. Yeah, yeah. They've got some engine braking on these as well, yeah, haven't they? I know, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that's why you can get away with the single front disc, I think, is because the engine braking is so phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so overall, John, is this bike going to be a keeper for you, do you think? Or do you think you'll move on one day? Um, I, I'm like every biker, I guess. You, you, you're you constantly looking and and, and admiring and, and going, well, it, you just wish you had a bigger garage. You know? Yes. Um, I, I think so. Um, I do like the Triumphs, I must admit. The Speed Twin uh, caught my attention. But the the um, T120 caught my attention first. But yeah. the things I'd want to do to it, they did with the Speed Twin. So it's like uh, with the gearing and, um, uh, you know, just up its power because obviously it's the uh, high power engine rather than the high torque engine yes be the, the differential between those but I, I still think that it's 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 going to be the, the r90 all over again oh is it yeah i think so for me if yeah I, if I, I got it it would be the same situation i'd end up riding it for an hour or two and then I, if i took it any any further i'd end up in pain and going it's a lovely bike but ow yeah um, yeah whereas this one it's comfy does it's loads of power it's uh, absolutely loads of fun yeah the only thing i noticed i don't know if you noticed it is the um it, the the front end tips in quite quite aggressively um it kind of caught me by surprise when i first rode it because the r90 has a, a dampener on it on, on the steering yeah. so you don't notice it and the um versus i didn't notice it but this one i was like oh yeah. tips right in maybe it's the weight i don't know but it, it obviously helps with the handling as well yeah i, I do f i kind of know what you mean with that i think it's because the wheel's so big on the front and yeah, it maybe because yeah. it gives you loads more um 
it, it makes it more powerful to turn in the actual turn in the gyroscopic effect as yeah. well yeah, yeah. maybe it's swinging it in a bit i don't yeah, know yeah. but um, I, I noticed it on, actually on slower corners than anything but um I, I think it's wonderful handling yes oh so do i, I yeah i mean this is the the first long-term bike that i've had as a cruiser for harley obviously i, I had the pan america not so long ago uh, for me this is a bike that's got so much character uh, whereas the Pan America is more of a, a mental choice, you know, that you, that you buy with your yeah, brain as opposed to your heart. Um, more of a Japanese style bike or German type bike than it is a, a, an American bike. You'd, you'd possibly say in a, a, a departure for Harley, but um, yeah. I, I, I think it looks quite handsome. Yeah, 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 I do too. Yeah, I, I really like the Pan. I thought it was a really good bike. But this for me, I've always said that I prefer the engine in the 114. Obviously, you've got the 107. Yeah. Uh, what cc is the uh, 107 that's a 1745 cc on this one okay and this one's oh, i think it's 1868 i think isn't it, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah i think so so it's another 100 cc basically in that yeah. yeah i'm always saying that uh, you know some bikes are so powerful i mean 1860 cc is is massive and that you know it's a massive for a bike but at the same time it it um it really is quite nice to ride and even around town these things are, are puppy dogs really aren't they oh, really smooth yeah. yeah really 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 smooth engines i think uh smoother than the r9t i, I would say um I, I mean i'm sure people will argue with me on that and they probably um have better experiences with them but uh i yeah. find it smooth around town uh the, the, the fueling on it is wonderful yeah it is yeah they've got the fueling so well mapped out haven't they yeah, yeah. And big question is, have you had any problems? And well, first of all, how much, how many miles have you done? Oh, I've, uh, only about two thousand on it, I think. So not far. I mean, so, like, I've had it a year. Covid struck, so we're kind of it, we, in the lockdowns and out of the lockdowns. We're trying to. We, we did what we could on them. So not that, not that many. Yeah. Um, but uh, I have had a few issues with it. Yet. Um, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, I had a warped. I thought I had a warped front disc. Um, it's the last time I hear from Harley. Carry on. Yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> you might, you might want to cut this bit out. Yeah, um, I, the, um, I thought it was a front desk because I was getting a, a, a squeal and a scratch, and the, the bike was pulling to the left. Right. I took it to, took it to them um, when it was at it needed the service because I thought it was fine. Did 700 miles and it just looked really annoying. You get into town and you'll get this ee, 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 constantly. It's like, oh man. So I took it to them and they said, uh, oh, the bike's too dangerous to ride. I just did 700 miles on it. Right. And um, they said, no, the rear discs. Um, warped so oh. I, I was writing my analysis it was a warped yes. disc I got the wrong one but because I picked the wrong one that obviously invalidated any warranty I could possibly claim on right. so they were a bit nasty that way uh, cost me quite a, quite a lot of money um, but it's all fixed no squealing yeah but for the service and the disc it's like uh, 485 pounds mm. and uh, yeah they did say they petitioned Harley a couple of times but obviously it's a consumable um, so they, they don't obviously warranty that, in the, they don't factor that into their warranty. And the warranty runs out in January, so I was kind of a bit miffed about that. Uh, but you know. That's understandable. I'm, I'm on your side with this one. Yeah. yeah, as much as I want all things to be sweet, you know, to, you know yeah, with what yeah. I'm talking about here, it, honesty is important to me when I'm doing this type of um, interview or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? It is a shame. Um, it, it, it did mile the... I love the bike and I, lo I, love, I love riding it. And that was... Having that sound was annoying. Then going and getting it sorted was annoying. Yes. And now it's lovely. But I'm obviously out of pocket by quite quite a considerable amount. But yeah. uh, it is what it is. You'd, yeah. you'd assume that it is a consumable that have it on the shelf. But I don't for it. That's yeah, that's yeah. Right. Which I guess that is one of those things, I suppose. It is isn't it? one but... of those things. They got... And anything else? I know, no, that's not what I can think of. Oh, is that it? Just, just that's the yeah, only that issue the only you've issue, had? Only issue I've had, I think, yeah. So if there's anything you could change about the street, Bob, is there anything that you can think of? Um, well, I, not... The thing is, is uh, they come out the gate not fully um, spec'd, really, don't they? I mean, yeah. you uh, like you do for a stage one and stage two and stuff like that, but ideally, with the money, you should be getting stage one and stage two. You should be getting the, the complete package, I think, with with a Harley. But you don't, and that's the yeah. that's the Harley tax, I guess. Yeah. And um, so, just to put people in the picture, stage one and stage two is to do with the exhaust, isn't it? Uh, the in, uh, it's the inlet um, and the exhaust. Uh, stage one would be uh, a new uh, air filter, uh, a stronger air filter, and a, an, a different exhaust. I've got an aftermarket exhaust on this one, and a. a a tuner as well which obviously it needs to be dynoed once you've changed the character of the engine that way right and stage two is those things and a, a new cam oh really is, which is a more, more aggressive cam yeah oh right oh that's you, interesting giving you longer lifts and, and is stuff. it screaming eagle exhaust yeah, um this one's not the mine's a vance and hines but the harley ones are screaming eagles yeah 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 
Am I right in saying that because of uh, Euro 5, that's changed a bit now? You do now have an oxygen sensor on the back, and I think you also have um, a catalytic converter in the, in, the, in the back of your exhaust as well, making it difficult, more difficult for you to modify without causing issues with your uh, ECU and stuff. So. Yeah, and um, I think I'm right in saying that they haven't actually got a Screaming Eagle for this bike yet. Do, are you aware of that? or? Um, I I heard, heard that there. Um, I heard yes and no's. I heard that somebody said there is, and a lot of people say there isn't. So, yeah, I, 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 they will bring one out. I, there's no two ways about it. Yeah, they will do. Yeah, but the way Euro Five is going, you know, and all these uh, new regulations are making it impossible for manufacturers to do anything these days, aren't they? You know, anything that's louder or coughs out a little bit more smoke, then they seem to be putting a cap on it. So, yeah. understandable, I guess. It's just the way. I mean, the way things are going electric. So, I think you know, with, this is the last hurrah of the petrol engines, really. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. It's it's it's, it's, it's you know we've got the glory days, really. I think of, I think we have, of um, combustion. Yeah. 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 And you got this little screen on yours. How much? Where does the wind hit you now? Um. It kind of hits my helmet, um, but it's, it's more on the top side and, and just on the shoulders. It, it spills it quite well because um, you're quite low as well and it's quite far away. Yeah. It does, does spill it out. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's, it is a bit night and day with it, um, even so, with such a small one. Uh, I found it very, very beneficial. Yeah, so how can we change the seat and why? You know, is it any better? I wanted the pillion capability and the um, the 107 Street Bob at the time didn't come with um, the same as the standard, doesn't actually come with a pillion seat at the time. Right. They, that's a recent, that's this year's edition, I think. Oh, um, is it? Yeah. So I wanted the, the capability, capability of having a, a rear, you know, pillion. Yeah. Um, if necessary, and hence the pegs as well, because it didn't come with those. Oh, does it not? Now oh, right, I okay. put those on. So yeah. I got that from America, which is a... Uh, a whiplash seat, which is uh, very nice. Yeah. People tend to go for the saddleman or the or the whiplash, but it, it depends on if you're quite tall. I'd advocate the whiplash because it pushes you back. Yeah. Because the saddleman pushes you forward. So if you're shorter, that's probably the seat to go for. I didn't Do you mind like me asking how much? Uh, that was about 350, but then again, I had to get it in. Choo choo! <laughs> Thanks for nothing, mate. Yeah, it's about 300 pounds to uh, 350, 300 pounds to, uh, from America. So it's quite exp I splurged a bit on it to, to get what I wanted. In all honesty, John, 300 quid for that isn't bad because that's a pillion and a normal seat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a new seat for my uh, NC750X is about that as well. So, okay. and you're getting double, and it's coming from abroad as well. So yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And what about the um, sissy bar? They call them, don't they? Yeah, a bit of a controversial term I think uh, that was uh, where was that Motier that was a German company I think yeah so I got everything from abroad trying to get controversial out. term I haven't upset our Harley riders have I <laughs> that's the last thing I want to do I think you might have done <laughs> I'm locking the door <laughs> no no I mean is it more comfortable or um, what the the seat is definitely yeah yeah um, wider um, and the pillion seat because that still looks relatively narrow uh, we had L on the back not very long ago and uh yeah, they reported it was okay. Um, for me, I found it difficult because I couldn't lock my legs. I'm not used to pillion on a, on a Harley. On a taller bike, you can sort of lock your legs when you've got somebody on the back. Yeah. So it's easier to stabilise. Um, so being the first cruiser I've taken anybody on the back with, I found that you have to have quite a bit of strength in your top of your, top of your legs to to balance that out when you're stopping things. Yeah, they, yeah I know exactly what you mean with that, actually. Yeah, Yeah, but they, they reported it was quite comfortable. No, obviously, the back rest adds, adds a sense of security. Maybe false, I don't know. Yeah, No, I don't think it's false because I've... You got the lumbar support on the the seat which I've been riding on on, on the 104, and the amount of times that I've got my um, my riding textiles on, and you open it up and it's it's shove, you're trying it's yeah. still trying to shove you up the yeah I did notice that with mine it did it did try and push you off the back quite a bit so but that is quite good yeah. long distance lumbar so yeah, yeah good future bikes have you uh, got anything that you'd like to have I, I mean we all want another bike don't we but have you got anything that uh, I'm, I'm trying to shy away from looking uh, like. Uh, Obviously, there's the Triumph range. I did, I did like the look of the uh, Speedmaster, the, the new Speedmaster, but I, it's basically a Harley Davidson in a different skin, if you know what I mean? And I know it's better tech, maybe, uh, but I don't know. If, you, if you're going to go for a, a cruiser, you might as well go for a Harley. You might as well, you might as well do it. I don't see the point in yeah, I totally agree. changing yourself. A couple of things I'll, I'll say there. I've, I've ridden a Speedmaster. Um, great bike, as all Triumphs are, nice to ride, yeah. but... You, you don't get the character that you get with this bike. 
I can, you know, that's one thing for sure. I mean, so I, I tried to speed master on uh, the Isle of Wight actually when I was on holiday, funny enough. And um, but it, it was just, you know, with this you get a lot more engagement, you know, with the engine. It's it feels so much more refined, yeah. you know, the speed master. Uh, that's my view on it. But um, John, thank you very much for that. I'm probably uh, speak to Reef for a bit now, if that's all right. It's your partner, and uh, we'll bring our bike in, and uh, you can stay there, mate. It's fine. Awesome.